Hey everybody, it's Film Festival Week. It's, uh, I say, the busiest week of my year. I think that's probably true. And so today, for those of you who join us online, we have picked one of our favorite messages from the year to share with you. If you've already seen it or heard this message, don't tune out and think, oh, well, this doesn't matter, I've heard it. We know, we know that repetition is a part of our spiritual growth. Uh, this is why we read and reread certain scriptures and certain uh, aspects of God's heart for us. It works its way deeper, deeper into our soul and into our mind and heart. And so give this message that we really believe God used to speak to all of us, uh, from my family uh, to you. We are going to share this message with you again and then look forward to being back with you next week as we continue our fall series. I love you guys. I love you all very much. Alton, I'm excited about this. We've been talking about doing this for a while. We're starting a new tradition at Dulles today on a, a breakfast morning. So for those in the Aldi area, in the Dulles area, we're having breakfast at Light Ridge and we're gonna tell this story live before breakfast. And for those not in the Dulles area, we're, we're gonna share the story with you. This has always been a fascinating story since I met you. Uh, years ago when we met, before we really became close and friends, you were, you were struggling in life, in a particular area of life. Tell me what was going on when we met. When we met, um many years ago, it feels like now. Yeah. But uh, I was um, still trying to recover from a lightning strike, uh, so my health wasn't in good shape. And um, before the lightning strike, I had gone through some family issues and uh, that was really weighing on me. And it, it, my relationship with God had taken quite a hit yeah. in those days. Yeah, so the lightning strike was at work you were an air traffic controller. Right. All right, so you you finished high school and went in as valedictorian, I'll say. Alton doesn't like to talk about that, but and went right into the Marines. Right. And you came out of the Marine Corps as an air traffic controller, landing airplanes here all over the metro area, and the tower was struck by lightning. The frequency that I was working was struck by lightning, and okay. the frequency is located at Andrews uh, Air Force Base, and uh, the radar, was uh, at the same facility, so at the same time, the, the radar and my frequency had gotten struck by lightning. Yeah, it's a super crazy story, and there's a lot of nuance to the story, a lot of details that we're going to, we're not gonna really get into the weeds uh, this morning, but uh, it, it was debilitating, and you ended up on disability and on a medication that, that somewhat helped your vertigo, but caused other side effects and that's when you and I met. Right. And so <clears throat> you were you were struggling to feel connected to God. You were really discouraged. Is that is that the word or is that an understatement? That is true. I, it took me there was a two year period before I came to Dulles that I was even scared to pray. I yeah. couldn't even talk to God. So a few years ago we did this cardboard morning. A number of churches around the country did did this similar idea and we're kind of sharing this idea where people in our church would tell part of their story, their, their before Jesus story on one side of the cardboard and then would turn the cardboard over to say, and this is, this is the effect Christ has been having on my life. And I saved yours. As we became friends, this ended up in my office. Um, when you walked on stage and held this, people who knew you were like, what? I mean, people were fighting back tears and like, what is this about? You know, that you you were actually praying for death for in, in part of the struggle. Right, that's true. Um, and it was a regular occurrence. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this is, this, we're talking about depression. We're talking about real discouragement for just your, your the physical situation you were in, some family struggles you had been dealing with. And when you walked into the church, and this isn't so much about, not really necessarily making a point about our church, but into a church that you felt was healthy, uh, that really showed you 
And I, I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But. I will say I'd never been to a church like DCC before, and I have been to many churches, including a snake church. Just a trying snake to, church? <laughs> yeah, I told that story on stage <laughs> long ago. But yes, I, I went to, yeah. And I forgot I, that. Yeah, and I went to uh, many, many churches trying to find God uh, throughout my life. And I've never found anything like DCC before I found DCC. And the other side of your cardboard was fully alive in Christ. And this was, you know, I've really discovered so much of Jesus in my own personal life here in our church as well, you know, just with the people of our church. Um, and so, you know, we, we believe Jesus is found in, in his church. Right. What would you say is a scripture that really guided you or came to life in you at Dulles? At Dulles, I discovered who Christ is, who Christ really is. And um, the scripture that speaks to me is Philippians 2-3. Yeah, that's one of my favorite chapters. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, what's the, what's the takeaway for you in that, what, what, what Paul is saying? You know, what's crazy about the way the world is today, it's so anti that scripture because it, it starts with do nothing out of vain conceit or selfish ambition. And it, it teaches us to focus, focus on others more than ourselves. And, and that, to me, is my God in life. Okay, I, I'm going to just read the whole Philippians 2 verses 3 and 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. You're right. I mean, that's like, we don't see this at all in the world today. Uh, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. And it goes on to say, this is modeling Jesus right. and the life of Jesus. What would you, what would you say to everybody in this, this summer, this series that we're in, this, this idea of the most exciting idea on earth being a particular kind of church. If we could have a world where people model Christ, like that scripture tells us, that it would be just the most amazing planet. And, and earth yeah. would never be the same. It would be completely transformed if uh, everybody just followed that. Yeah, and one thing I love about working with you in the church is that we're so committed to this. You, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We are still broken and being made whole by Jesus. But we are convinced, we're convinced that the one who is perfect, yes. following him and chasing him and, and emulating him, actually will move our planet, will actually move our world toward life. Absolutely, absolutely. Can you just imagine that, though? If the whole world became that, the earth would not be the same. It would be completely transformed. Okay, so uh, it's worth repeating. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of the others. Uh, to finish here, Alton, what would you say to anybody... Uh, in the Dulles family here in the Dulles area or someone watching around the country or really from anywhere who's struggling or maybe in a dark place or maybe they're really battling discouragement or depression? Oh, wow. Uh, I, I know when in my past, my anxiety and my depression mostly came from trying to do things my way. Uh, that did not work as well as doing things the Jesus way. And, and what I've learned at DCC is how to put that into practice. And, and it's been life-changing for me. Yeah, I love you, man. I love you too, bro. I love doing church with you. Same, same. Hey, everybody, have a great week. I'm excited to uh, teach the next part of our series next weekend. And we can't wait to see you then.